Okay, so welcome back to Anne. We're in chapter six. Our words are vim, to put your or in. And no, we're not talking about what put your or in means right now because we will figure it out when we get to the word, right? Mortal, harrowed, admonished, glibly, heathen, lisping, irreverence, and mance. So we just talked about how Marilla went to find out what happened. How did they end up with a girl? And she met Mrs. Blewett. And she's like, I don't really want my Anne to go to Mrs. Blewett, even though she's not a fan of Anne, right? So she's thinking, well, maybe, maybe we can do this after all. So when they, meaning Anne and Marilla, arrived back at Green Gables that evening, Matthew met them in the lane. Marilla from afar had noted him prowling along it and guessed his motive. She was prepared for the relief she read in his face when she saw that she had at least brought Anne back with her. But she said nothing to him relative to the affair until they were both out in the yard behind the barn milking the cows. We're not talking about milking the cows right now. Then she briefly told him Anne's history and the result of the interview with Mrs. Spencer. We found out from Mrs. Spencer that her niece had brought the word, so it was kind of like phone tag, right? You whisper to somebody, they whisper to somebody, and then the answer at the end is not what it was. I wouldn't give a dog I like to that bluet woman, said Matthew with unusual vim. What do you think vim means? I stump ya. Okay. What? A sink? A sink? A thing. A thing? No, it's it's the way they say it. Sarcasm? What? Sarcasm? Not sarcasm with vim which is enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. With unusual vim, unusual enthusiasm. What does that mean? Excitement. Oh. Yeah, so I mean, it's a little bit different sounding, but usually it's like with excitement or upset. <laughs> That's funny. Huh? Mrs. Blewett Blewett. That's why her name is Blewett. Oh. I don't fancy her style much myself, admitted Marilla. But it's that or keeping her ourselves, Matthew. And since you seem to want her, I suppose I'm willing. Or have to be. I've been thinking over the idea until I got, I've got kind of used to it. It seems a sort of duty. I've never brought up a child, especially a girl, and I dare say I'll make a terrible mess of it. But I'll do my best. So far as I'm concerned, Matthew, she may stay. Matthew's shy face was a glow of delight. Well, now, I reckon you'd come to see in that light, Marilla, he said. She's such an interesting little thing. It'd be more to the point... If, you'd, if you could say she was a useful little thing, retorted Marilla, but I'll make it my business to see she's trained to be that. And mind, Matthew, you're not going to go interfering with my methods. Perhaps an old maid doesn't know much about bringing up a child, but I guess she knows more than an old bachelor. So you just leave me to manage her. When I fail, it'll be time enough to put your oar in. What do you think to put your oar in means? Like, you do, it's like your turn to put some effort in? Okay. You're on the right track. Yeah, give your two cents for you to try, for you to butt in. 
So put your or in means to insert your opinion when it wasn't asked for. So you'll have time to give. Oh, thanks. Give your opinion. And usually giving your opinion to put your or in means you weren't asked. So it's kind of like if you just blurt and give me an idea and you're not asked, you're putting your or in. Okay, all set? All right, here we go. There, there, Marilla, you can have your own way, said Matthew reassuringly. Only be as good and kind to her as you can without spoiling her. I kind of think she's one of the sort you can do anything with if you only get her to love you. Marilla sniffed to express her contempt for Matthew's opinions concerning anything feminine and walked off to the dairy with the pails. So she's going to milk some cows. I won't tell her tonight she can stay, she reflected as she strained the milk into the creamers. She'll be so excited she couldn't sleep she wouldn't sleep a wink. Marilla Cuthbert, you're fairly in for it. Do you ever suppose you'd see the did you ever suppose you'd see the day when you'd be adopting an orphan girl? It's surprising enough, but not so surprising as Matthew should be at the bottom of it. Him that always seemed to have such a mortal dread of little girls. Anyhow, we've decided on the experiment, and goodness only knows what will come of it. What do you think mortal means? Yeah, mortal means of or relating to death. So he was like mortal fear. He had a deathly fear of her, right? Or deathly fear of little girls. So mortal death. Yep, immortal is the opposite means. What? Moral. M O R A L. This is mortal. M O R T A L. So the T changes things. All right. Goodness knows what could come of it. So we are on page, well, chapter 7, which would be your page 42. 48. Oh, 42, 48, I'm sorry. When Merla took Anne up to bed that night, she said stiffly, Now, Anne, I noticed last night that you threw your clothes all about the floor when you took them off. That is a very untidy habit, and I cannot allow it at all. As soon as you take off your, any article of clothing, fold it neatly and place it on the chair. I haven't any use at all for little girls who aren't neat. I was so harrowed up in my mind last night that I didn't think about my clothes at all, said Anne. What do you think harrowed means? Yeah, what was she focusing on? Because last night she found out... Oh, yeah, because they didn't want her. They didn't want her. So she was really... Sad. Well, it's more than sad. Upset. Like, so, so vexed or distressed. So it's a little bit further, like, so... Distressed is, like, worse than upset. Okay, so she's harrowed. She said, I was so harrowed up in my mind last night that I didn't think about my clothes at all, said Anne. I'll fold them nicely tonight. They always made us do that at the asylum. Half the time, though, I'd forget. I'd be in such a hurry to get into bed nice and quiet and imagine things. 
You'll have to remember a little better if you stay here, admonished Marilla. What do you think admonished means? Told said. Is it just told or said or do you think it's a little bit deeper than told or said? It is. So it's kind of like if you're talking and I start asking you questions. Yeah, so in this case, it's like a warning. So Marla's warning. That's an R. Sorry, I'll try to fix it. Warning, W-A-R-N. Uh, I'll just rewrite it. Yes, that's why I was fixing it. She was warning or it was disapproval. So, like, when Miss Richardson warns you by asking you RTC questions, that's your reminder to get back on track, right? Yeah, but if I just say be quiet, is that the same as me admonishing you? No. No, it's a little bit deeper than just saying be quiet, you're too loud. There's a, there's that, there, that looks like, that looks something like, say, you'll have to remember a little better if you stay here, admonish Marilla. There, that looks something like, say your prayers now and get into bed. I never say any prayers, announced Anne. Marilla looked horrified astonishment. Why, Anne, what do you mean? Were you never taught to say your prayers? God always wants little girls to say their prayers. Don't you know who God is, Anne? God is a spirit, infinite, eternal, and unchangeable. In his, in his being, wisdom, power, holiness, justice, goodness, and truth, responded Anne promptly and glibly. What do you think glibly means? You forgot? Anne said, God is a spirit, infinite, eternal, and unchangeable. In his being, wisdom, power, holiness, justice, goodness, and truth, responded Anne promptly and glibly. Give me just, I'll, I'll spool back to you. So she, is she saying it seriously? Glibly means uh, ease informally. Informality, informality. So if I was to say, do you think I'm going to walk up to Mrs. Rayburn and say, what's up, dog? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That's what I would be like. That's what I would do. No, I'm not going to walk up to her because that's pretty informal, right? Kind of it is kind of rude. Now, if I was to walk up to my friend and say, what's up, buttercup, or what's up, chicken nuggets? Yeah. Like yeah. Right? Then that's a little bit different story. So with our friends, we are informal or we're at ease, but not so much with bosses. Yeah. All right, I have to stop right there.
Um, what I want you to do, let's look at the questions really quick and make sure there's nothing else we can do. Oh, we can definitely do this one. Number two, why was Matthew's face a glow of delight? You can do number two. Make sure you use races. We'll talk to you later. Bye.